Um, and is there any, uh, this is a difficult question, but is there any sense of, you know, morality from a neuroscientific perspective, you know, because from the Buddhist perspective, they do have this idea that there is some kind of fundamental goodness in it. Um, and it feels good to be good also, like from a selfish perspective. <laughs> but from the neuroscientific perspective, is there, uh, is there any value associated there with, um, you know, being, a, being aggressive, being being altruistic or being neutral? Um, is that just our choice of which, we, which we'd like to do with our lives or is there a direction um, from our biology? Well, that's a very, very good question. And I think that is a very tricky point in which neuroscience and our cultural backgrounds join. And so in different studies, we'll probably provide different answers. For example, Richard Davidson, this neuroscientist who has been working very close to his holiness, the Dalai Lama, for over three decades, he has focused on studying compassion and the compassionate roots through evolution. Is it true that there is some part of the brain that is devoted to making us feel compassion for others? And he has devoted all his studies, and likely for us, and we discuss this more in the course. So, and there are other studies that are more intertwined with psychological uh, points of views that studies the, um, the tendency to be competitive. And so in those tendency, of course, aggression will come up more usually than not. And also the tendency to uh, feel depressed and how a hormonal disbalance, imbalance can cause all those illnesses. So depending on the um, school of choice, you will get to different understandings. Yeah, Geshe-la, what's what's the Buddhist perspective? And and also you're, you know, you know a lot about neuroscience as well. What what's mm -hmm. your perspective of, you know, what's what's fundamental and deep and uh, with morality and whether you know goodness is deeper than uh, our negative emotions. <laughs> I mean, from the Buddhist perspective, is 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 yeah, it's quite clear. All the teachings of the Buddha. They talk about our mental attitudes motivates our physical and verbal behaviors. And it depends on how we feel or how we act in a mental way, actually it produces a particular, you know, physical verbal act. And we see that in, in, in many fields that people who have disturbed mind, they can create causes of problems in society. Yeah. For example, one of my friends who translate for projects in the prison, in central prison in Bangalore, he is there for murder, but he is a very, very nice person. He's a very nice person to be with. And he does a lot of good social things for the inmates. And he translated in the local language. He talks the local language. He knows how to talk with the people. So when you meet with him, you think, oh, very nice chap, right? But he committed act of murder. So he told me once, he said, you know, he said for 10, 15 minutes, I was not in control. I made a mistake. So that proves that our mental attitudes actually creates uh, reaction in, in, the, in the physical world. But it's possible to train your mind, as we all know, in Buddhism, we talk about this kind of innate aspects of compassion, love and kindness, wisdom, which are innate in the sense that if they were not a part of us, we would never be able to develop it, right? If we never have those potential, we're never, never able to develop it. So it's possible to develop that, right? So that's the kind of an innate potential we all have, humans, animals. So there's a very interesting research that, and there's more like different types of research that not only human beings, but even in the animal realm, we see this kind of aspect of these potentials that can be developed. Yeah. So in Buddhism, then, of course, we try to draw on that potential and try to use methods or methodologies that helps us to develop those innate uh, kind of potentials. And... If by doing so, then the person changes, right? And that has to do then with this neuroplasticity, as you can call it, that it train your mind, train your brain, as we call it. That as I said, there is consciousness. And what consciousness is all about from a neuroscientific point of view is still quite a question. But the brain, we know to a certain extent. So, and we know how, if you train consciousness in the same research, different types of research by, you know, Richard Davidson and others, that meditators who contemplated these potentials of the mind, this positive aspect of the mind over, let's say, 15,000 till 15,000 hours, they produced gamma waves never measured before in the human brain. So that means that there are potentials within our consciousness that actually, if you activate them, right, 
you can develop them to an extent that you can measure things in the brain that produces incredible positive aspects that was never measured before. So that means we have the potential, but it's a matter of fact of, of, of to develop, right? So yeah, that's, that's, that's another potential because we can develop.